When the murder of George Floyd happened, it just made people want to support black people. It made white equestrians in the horse industry want to support black equestrians. And so like now when everybody's like, oh, black cowboys, black equestrians, black horse people, um, for me it was normal. Like I grew up doing that. People are just blown away by the fact that we have a history in this. Good girl, we're going right across the street to another stall. That's it. Good girl. My dad built this barn and it has 22 stalls in it. This is where I grew up. My dad built the actual barn in 1985. I have eight horses. My dad has three horses and then we rent out stalls and pastures for boarding. So there's roughly maybe 30 something horses here all together. This is Caitlin Gooch. She's an author, an educator, and most importantly, a writer. She's been writing since she was three years old. In the past seven years, she's also built a small community online where she's known as the Black Cowgirl. I use the Black Cowgirl as my stage name because it's simple. Like, I'm black, and when I go to meet kids, they're like, oh, it's a cowgirl. The stereotypical cowboy in America is like this lean white man. And he has Wrangler boots and Wrangler jeans and a 10-gallon cowboy hat. And that is not me. <laughs> As a black cowgirl, Caitlin has gone viral. Let's talk about the very bold and well-respected Mary Fields, also known as Stagecoach Mary. Her goal is to educate people about black Americans' contributions to horse culture, whether via trail riding, horse racing, farming, and as cowboys and cowgirls. <laughs> In, Magazine. in 2020, Oprah retweeted her. So I don't know how Oprah found my tweet. She retweeted it, and of course, like that amplified my voice even more and the numbers and my follower count. Today, Caitlin has over 40,000 followers across her accounts. She's been writing most of her life, but it wasn't until she went off to college that Caitlin realized a lot of people weren't aware of black equestrians. We have always been involved in the horse industry and we can be here and we deserve to be here. Black cowboys and cowgirls are often left out of old Western movies and history books. But historians estimate that one in four cowboys of the American West were African-American. Black men, women, and children, both enslaved and free, were among the earliest cowhands on Texas ranches. Black cowboys and cowgirls were essential to the cattle industry, especially out west. They drove herds of cattle across the plains, maintained the land, and worked as ranch hands. One of the most famous cowboys was Nat Love, who was born into slavery in 1854, and as a boy, learned how to rope, herd, and brand cattle and horses. His story was recently featured in the Netflix film, The Harder They Fall. Bill Pickett was also featured in the movie. He was one of the first black rodeo cowboys in the early 1900s. He invented bulldogging, a technique of grabbing cattle by the horns and wrestling them to the ground that is still used today. Finding that history has been pretty cool, but one thing that I haven't been able to find is all the women. Like there's so many cowboys and I found like three women so far. Eliza Carpenter was a formerly enslaved woman who became the only black stable owner in Oklahoma in the early 1900s. In 1954, Sylvia Rideout Bishop became the first black woman licensed to train horses in the United States. And in the early 1970s, Cheryl White became the first black woman licensed to jockey in the nation. Guy Tracer races challenge me for the rail position and gets it. In 1875, the very first Kentucky Derby was won by a black jockey, Oliver Lewis. In fact, 15 of the first 28 derbies were won by black jockeys. But by the 20th century, as Jim Crow laws spread in the South, white jockeys demanded segregation and the removal of black jockeys from competition. The one consistent thing that tends to happen is that people ask whose horses are they, like if they see me, driving the truck in the trailer, people just automatically assuming that it's someone else's horse, which I don't think 
I mean, I've asked a couple of white equestrians if that's ever happened to them, and most of them have said no. Whether they're thinking like, oh, it's because she's black, or oh, because she's a woman, or she's a black woman, I just laugh it off because people have no idea, you know, like how strong I am. You are so beautiful, Rhonda. Novely, have you rode a horse before? Before? You did, you rode it by yourself? Wow. Caitlin is the mother of four and includes her kids in her TikToks. Say Sylvia Bishop. Huh? You've been awake this whole time? Lord. <laughs> what do y'all want to eat? High five this hair for Ragroni. High five this hair for pizza. Which one? Thirsty. You thirsty? All right, let's go get your cup, okay? In 2019, Caitlin started Saddle Up and Read, a nonprofit organization where kids without direct access to a local stable can go to her farm and pet, ride, and read to horses. And I started it to help raise the literacy rates in North Carolina. According to the nation's 2019 report card, only 36% of fourth graders in North Carolina read at a proficient or higher level. As of September 2022, Caitlin has raised about $40,000 with the nonprofit. She's also created her own coloring book to educate kids on black equestrian history. I love to read and I just wanted to pass that on and also the love of horses. Next for me, I'm just really focused on this land that's here. Um, this is all my family's land on both sides. I mean, I just want to continue working towards the future and making this the best space possible for people and horses. I think it's important for people, not just black people, not just people of color, but even white people to realize that black people have always been a part of this. We're learning about everything else. We should learn about black horse folk too.